Hey guys, me again. Uh, we're going to actually continue with the tutorial about pasting all the Excel data into the Word document. And if you remember the last tutorial, which was just a simple thing about creating this one uh, document. Um, had these bookmarks, had this section table, just so you guys know there's a space in between. And now we're going to let the script actually do the work and uh, handle all the copy and pasting. So let me go ahead and close that out open up Visual Basic here, this editor let's kind of readjust this a little bit guys okay so now I'm going to create a couple of local variables here to actually handle um, opening up the word application Do a quick little error check to see if it's open or not. Uh, it is, and Word isn't running, so we have to start it. Oops. I'm just going to copy this. So now we're going to actually open up the document. And set it visible. We want to see the magic going and ha uh, working. Um, as it goes on, here it's going to make a little note, create a new function to help us actually paste the data. And afterwards, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup, releasing memory. And at the end of it all, we're going to unload the actual frame here. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and create that function which is going to help actually paste the data um, and generate the table. So guess what the function name is going to be? Paste data and generate table. We're going to pass it to person list as reference. And just FYI passing by reference. If we were to manip manipulate the actual data here and change it, it will be reflected in the method that was called from. Um, you can also have it by value or by default. If you don't even include this identifier, it is a uh, default by value. So let me go ahead here and create some more local variables. Just bear with me for a second, guys. And the reason why I have this thing called middle list and round is because if you remember the spreadsheet had two tabs, 20 uh, people in each tab, but I read it all into one array. And for this demo, I actually want to actually uh, paste two different sections, two different tables. So I have this middle list uh, marking the middle of the actual array, and the first 20 indexes is going to be for the first table, the last 20 is going to be in the second table. So let me go ahead and create some more variables here to actually create the table itself. Excuse me. So Here's where the bookmarks are very important. We're going to tell the script to actually go to those bookmarks that we actually created. First one we're going to tell it to go to is where we want to copy the actual items. And this my mistake here, this should be go to. Let me copy this. 
because after we copy that copy section we want it to go to the paste section and before we actually paste anything I just want to move the cursor a line up and do a couple of carriage returns which is done by simply doing this because I, I want the cursor to be ahead or on top of the actual place marker as we'll be placing another table or another section after this first generated table um, so just kind of going back let me open up this word document so what's going on here is that this code is saying go to this copy section and copy it so what's going to do here is the copy section bookmark it's going to copy this then it's telling the code the code is telling the cursor to move to the paste section move up carry return twice and paste so let's go ahead and just close this again to the BBA editor. So we did a paragraph there. Now we're going to actually paste. Now we're going to tell the cursor to also move up again. Uh, about five times. And now we're going to actually have it find those triple bracket placeholders if you remember. I had this section table okay. Don't care about the format, I want it to match the case. It's gonna copy um, excuse me. Few more lines from the notes just to save some time. These actually don't affect it at all, but it's just a force of habit that I always include that there. Just so I can remember that there's other wildcards that I could look for, um, even if I'm not using it for this particular instance. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have to actually execute that command and then delete it. Because we don't care about the triple bracket placeholder, we want to actually find it and replace it. So now before we actually create the table, let me just go ahead and create a couple more local variables here. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm doing in a minute. remember I read two different tabs each one has 20 uh, in the first section when it's country equals 1 I'm telling it to grab from index 0 to the middle list which is 20 of the array and then I increment the counter and uh, I'm going to tell the start index to go from the middle of the array to the middle of the array times 2 which brings it to the very end uh, it's probably not the most elegant way to do it but just for this tutorial I wanted to read in two tabs and since it's in one array, this is for me the quickest, simplest, dirtiest way to actually get that to, to work. So now we're going to go ahead and create the table itself. I'm going to do one row, four columns. And just to save some time again, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and copy some of my notes that I have. Because it is a lot of typing to do. So I'm setting the, uh, the, the, the font size to 9, setting the column width of each of the four columns to 90. I'm going to go ahead and copy this part as well. Just the, sets the shading of it, and now I'm going to actually name each of the columns. So one is pretty much for me is the actual column. 
it's going to be first name two three four columns two three four last name email phone number okay so now we're going to do this row number equals one or i equals start index to end index minus one so we're going to do this when i add a row increment the row number and um, and actually fill in the data, fill in the table with the actual data from the list that we read in from the spreadsheet. Make this fit more inside. here okay, I'm going to collapse the table and actually set the caption uh, you can do figure captions table captions and here you can see the figure are just being marked as a table caption I'm going to go ahead and copy the next 50 lines they all pretty much uh, do the same thing. It it's basically says to do um, for every left part of the cell, right part of the cell, top and bottom of the cell, just fill it in with an actual line, color black, the width, and the style. It makes it seem more grid-like, and that's kind of how I like to see it, just so you can clearly denote between each of the cells. And that's that for this uh, function definition. So let me just go ahead and call it here and pass in the person list and then put a breakpoint. I'm going to run it so we can actually see the magic happen. So let me do this. Grab it. So uh, there we go through the actual Excel spreadsheet. See here it's telling it to go to this bookmark copy section. Just kind of move this over, copies it, goes to the paste section, move the line up, couple carriage returns, paste, move up again. Find a section table, deleted it. I think it's off screen, guys, so sorry you couldn't see that deletion. Let me just move this a little more down. Creating the table, the rows, there's the headers. I forgot to uh, undo the bold and undo the shading for the subsequent rows, but you can see that working there. Creates the caption. Here's where the lines comes. Now here's the second round. We saw the section table get deleted there. Doing a little bit too fast because I'm letting this roll. And uh, the form unloaded, and here it is. So, in retrospect, I should have the the cursor highlight this, delete that, because that's just a placeholder thing. But here's section one, table one with those uh, people's names. Section two with table two. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it.